Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another Mattel Jurassic Park 30th Anniversary Hammond Collection release, as we have maybe one of the most anticipated figures of all time in the Jurassic line, the Carithosaurus. We've been asking Mattel for so long to give us a Carithosaurus. We finally have one, and I think it looks awesome from what I've seen so far. So I'm really happy and really excited to dive into this one. But you can see, again, the box art is pretty much the same, except Except now, instead of there being nothing here, we have the Jurassic Park 30th Anniversary logo. We've got, of course, a nice shot here of the Carithosaurus on the side of the box with the Jurassic Park 3 logo. So we've got the 30th Anniversary logo on the front, but the Jurassic Park 3 logo on the side, which is, of course, where you do see this dinosaur. And you can also see, again, that we have the JP3 logo on the back. A nice shot of where we see the Carithosaurus in the film, as well as, again, some information on the dinosaur itself, and specifically that scene. So, let's pop this out of the box and check it out. So, here is our Carithosaurus, and I need to get these legs in a little bit of a smoother spot for it to stand nicely, but wow, is that awesome! Like, it's bigger, first of all, than I was expecting. I don't know why, but I feel like it might even be bigger than the Parasaurolophus. I just assumed these two would be exactly the same size. But definitely impressive in the size department. Of course, the sculpt looks great, but the paint job also looks really nice. And for some reason, a few images I had seen online had me kind of almost a little put off by the figure. But uh, in hand, again, it definitely looks really good. I'm immediately, though, noticing one thing that I wish was different about the figure was some articulation in the wrists, because I would have loved to have been able to put it kind of down in like a quadrupedal pose. But I can obviously see that we don't have articulation in the wrists. They're just bent this way all the time. So that's a little bit of a bummer. It isn't going to be the ultimate Carithosaurus, obviously, for that reason, in my opinion. But it's obviously the best one we've had in the Jurassic franchise when it comes to the toy line because we never had one so of course it's going to be awesome as far as that goes but it looks really nice here again at the first glance first few moments of us taking a look at it out of the packaging but the only way to truly tell how nice it is is with a closer look so let's jump to it right now so starting up here at the head sculpt of our Carithosaurus, you can see it has some pretty nice looking detailing here throughout. You can see the ears back here behind the eye. You can see some nice paintwork to it as well as we have kind of like a mustard yellow sort of tone here for the majority of the face. But you can also see a black tone there around the eye as well as a black leading up here along the lower part of the face. You can also see we have a yellow eye with a nice black pupil. Very different tone of yellow compared to that kind of mustard type color that we have on the face. You can also see that black pupil really shines unlike the black pupil or actually I should say the brown pupil on the Metricanthosaurus. You can also see that we have that classic Carithosaurus crest up here with some nice reddish tones as well as that lighter kind of off-white leading around the outer edge. And the detailing within the crest also looks quite nice. And we can see again with that sort of off-white tone, we have a speckling, or we could see a moment ago, there's a speckling that runs through it. So you can see the speckling up here on the crest leading down here into the beak itself. And it's just nice to have a little extra color variation, even though we already have a good bit of it. And you can see the nostrils right there. Of course, the mouth is in an open position already. You can see the tongue there on the inside of the mouth. Not a whole lot going on there as far as the detailing goes on the inside of the mouth, but it looks okay for what it is. And of course, the jaw does articulate, so we can close it, and it looks pretty darn nice with the mouth closed. I actually think it looks really nice. And I know a lot of people were kind of commenting about whether it was going to have those big kind of almost like hamster-like cheeks, like it looks like a hamster with its mouth full of uh, food or something, but uh, kind of doesn't. I think it, I mean, it sort of has that wide face, not quite as bad as what we had seen on the Parasaurolophus. But as you lead down, you immediately can see you have a nice area of articulation here, and I think that's probably some of the nicest articulation we've had on Hammond Collection figures, like the two theropods I recently had taken a look at didn't have the ability to turn their head and neck quite that sharp, so you can see we have a really, really nice articulated neck on this one. It's mostly the upper part that really sets that articulation off, because it's very, very nice, very smooth, but you, of course, do have the articulation in the lower part 
of the neck as well. But if you look up here on the top of the back, we have like a variation of a brown that begins to have like a striping effect moving down the back of the neck and then down into the spinal column here of the dinosaur. And you can also see it kind of designs into a different sort of striping as you move down. You can also see that we have this black that runs down the course of the neck kind of outlining that mustard yellow color that we have for the dinosaur. You can also see the throat here on the underside as well as some nice looking skin texture on the underside of the lower jaw. As we move back here, you can kind of make out the shoulder blade. Again, the skin texture looks fantastic. I would honestly say this newest round of larger Hammond collection figures have had some of the nicest detail that we've ever seen in the Mattel line. As you move down, you can see the muscle definition in the arm, and of course you can see that we have the articulation in the shoulder as well as the elbow, and it is unreasonably smooth. Like, wow, that is super smooth. Normally it takes you a minute, you can also again articulate it out, but normally it takes you a minute to kind of wear it in, but that's just smooth immediately right from the start. Both arms are. Again, I really would have liked to have seen some articulation in the wrist just so we could straighten that out, but you know, maybe they can work on that for a future release. But you can see that the hand looks really nice. We have some nicely sculpted out kind of scoots down the fingers, though shockingly we don't have paint on the nails of the hand. I find that a little bit strange because they've been very good at applying that to the Hammond collection line. We do have paint work though for the toenails, just not the hand, you know, that's weird. But as you lead back here, you can again see some skin wrinkles and skin folds and stuff. No real difference in coloration here on the underside. We see this kind of like off-white for the majority of the body, almost like a light gray. As you lead along, you continue to see how this mustard yellow color sort of overtakes the majority of the upper side of the dinosaur, again outlined with that black and a very sporadic sort of design. As you lead back into the thigh, we continue to have that yellow moving through, but again we have the black, a few random black splotches. As you move down, into the thigh a little bit further and you can see we return back to that lighter kind of like a light grayish tone we again have some nice muscle definition you can also see the kneecap right there as well as a calf muscle and then a really nice but quite wide foot sculpt like it's an oddly thick looking foot sculpt but it looks pretty decent for what it is nice scoots down the toes and again the nails are painted with a nice glossy tone of a black or maybe, maybe more of like a dark gray. Actually, a little bit of sloppiness right there. That's weird. You don't really see that very often on the Hammond collection. But you can also take note to the speckles and stuff as you move down. Again, it's really obvious in the lighter grayish tone. But you again have articulation in the hip, which is stiff. So not, the entire figure isn't really all that loosened up like the front leg there, or front arm, I mean, is. But you can see again... It's a little jerky, but it works pretty nicely and can also move out away from the body. You also, again, have the kneecap. Now, that is very, very smooth in the knee. And, of course, you have areas down here, two areas of articulation, to continue to give you, again, that really smooth movement. That is super, super smooth. And all of these areas, just like with every Hammond Collection release, can swivel. As you lead back up here into the tail... You see that that yellowish tone kind of diminishes here for a moment, the black of course outlining it, and then we have a few random splotches of it as we continue to move out into the tail, and then it becomes a little more sporadic as you move out into the tail, and then it transitions entirely to the black as you lead out the rest of the tail with again that lighter kind of grayish tone for the lower part of the tail. You have articulation right here again like you always do, and, as always, you've got the wire tail, which is also a huge plus. And you're not really going to see too much of anything else going on here that's different on the figure, uh, especially when you look at the opposing side, because, again, being a fully articulated figure, you're just really not going to see much difference. But uh, the figure as a whole is absolutely beautiful. Definitely one of the nicest Hammond Collection figures so far, and I think that can be said for pretty much every one of these new releases, because the Irritator was awesome, the Metricanthosaurus was awesome, maybe my favorite overall, and then of course the Corythosaurus is also awesome, and we'll soon have reviews up for the Stegosaurus and T-Rex as well, but definitely an awesome, awesome figure. I also want to say, looking at it now, I was looking at it through my camera earlier, the eye kind of looked yellow through my camera, now looking at it here, it looks way more orange, so I must correct that mistake, as I again said it was a yellow, but it's actually an orange. But the figure does stand really nicely, you can see it stands quite beautifully even in this somewhat crouched position. As far as the size goes, like I said, it's a pretty big one. Let's straighten the head out actually a little bit. 
For a length, you're looking at about 13 and a half inches or around 35 centimeters and height wise in this position, which of course it can change entirely depending on how tall you want it to stand, but it's about five and a half inches or 14 centimeters for a size comparison. There is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack, Colovisaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Corythosaurus from the Hammond collection. And you can see exactly as I said, it's very large, even in comparison to Mr. Papo Rex, who is a pretty big figure himself. This Parasaurolophus definitely outsizes Mr. Papo Rex quite drastically. And then a comparison that I was definitely interested in seeing and maybe the most interested in seeing when it comes to this figure we have the Parasaurolophus now you can see the size is actually pretty similar however the Corythosaurus still wins as far as the size goes because the tail is absolutely longer on the Corythosaurus compared to the Parasaurolophus the Parasaurolophus has a way shorter tail and if we actually turn the figure here to show you the tail length next to each other if we try to get it in a spot where you can really see how long the tail is there you can definitely see again the tail length is a bit longer on the Corythosaurus and if we put the two right above and take a look at them again at exactly the same joint you can see the tail of the Corythosaurus is a lot longer but still really cool to see these two together because of course uh again Hadrosaurus running away from Alan and everybody else in JP3 is a pretty cool scene in that film and you could throw both of these into that scene and again recreate it here with all of these awesome Hammond collection figures we keep getting. Then for another comparison here is the Hammond collection Velociraptor showing you that again it's very small probably should have actually brought the Jurassic Park 3 Raptors in rather than the Jurassic Park Raptor just because again it's a Jurassic Park 3 Corythosaurus but whatever they're the same size so you can get an idea again of the size between these two. And then if you are curious about a comparison between the new metric Canthosaurus and the Corythosaurus, here you go, showing you that both of these figures definitely sport some pretty good size to them. Same deal for the new Irritator, again, next to the Corythosaurus, to further give you an idea of the fact that the Irritator is quite a bit smaller. Then we've got ourselves the Ceratosaurus, who seems to be just ever so slowly beginning to fall forward right now. I see him just kind of sinking down, so I must not have his ankles in a good spot. There he goes on his face. But you can see again, uh, comparison-wise, these two look pretty much just like the Corythosaurus did with the Metric Canthosaurus. We've also got the Ankylosaurus, so we have two Jurassic Park 3 dinos here, as we did when we had the Ceratosaurus in here. Then we've got Jurassic World meets Jurassic Park 3, as we have the Baryonyx next to the Corythosaurus for another comparison. And then just as we did with the last few Hammond Collection comparisons, uh, Hammond Collection reviews, I should say, we have the T-Rex here for the final comparison next to the Corythosaurus. Yet again, the T-Rex reigns supreme, but that Corythosaurus is still a pretty darn nice size. So this brand new Mattel Jurassic Park 30th Anniversary Jurassic Park 3 Corythosaurus is another absolute beauty of a figure. Like, they really are honestly on fire right now when it comes to these Hammond Collection releases. I am so psyched for the upcoming Brachiosaurus, as well as, of course, to review the T-Rex and... Uh, the baby stegosaurus for you guys but it's kind of sad that we don't really have a lot of anything else announced right now for the hammond collection outside of those dinosaurs like we haven't heard of any other future species coming to the line as far as i'm aware there is rumors i don't know if it's actually been fully confirmed yet but of another t-rex i don't know if it's going to be a male or what and i also don't know if that's actually true but we'll see i guess but this corythosaurus is pretty much a dream come true for many collectors because we've been aching to get a good corythosaurus in our collection especially since jurassic park 3 has come out we haven't had any we didn't have any in the jurassic park 3 line we haven't had any in the mattel line in the hasbro jurassic world line nothing all the way up until now this dinosaur finally gets its due and it's also very interesting to note that the Corythosaurus here is showing up in the Hammond collection before it had ever shown up in the main line of Mattel, which is something that I don't know that we've really seen before. Most figures usually debut in the main line, not the Corythosaurus, we debut in the Hammond collection. This Corythosaurus almost looks like it was straight up pulled out of like concept art and brought here. It looks so good. The sculpt is gorgeous, again, really highly detailed. The paint job is also really nice. I don't know that it perfectly captures the Jurassic Park 3 Corythosaurus, but for the most part, I think it definitely does, especially when it comes to kind of toy form. For the paint job, I think they did a very good job on that. And uh, it's awesome, of course, seeing paint all the way out onto the tail, painted nails and all of that stuff. It is a little sad to see we don't have paint on the hands, but 
when it comes to the nails, but that's not the end of the world. It is also a little disheartening to see that we don't have articulation in the wrists. I would have really loved to have seen that, but those are pretty much my only complaints, and they're very minor. As a whole, the sculpt is fantastic, the paint job is really nice, and the articulation is awesome outside of the wrist. So if you are interested in picking this up, it again is another awesome Mattel release, and definitely another high recommendation from me. So make sure you check the link that I will include in the description to where you can can purchase this on Big Bad Toy Store right now. It may be in stock right now. It may be pre-order. Whatever it is, just keep checking back. Or if it is pre-order, actually, don't check back. Pre-order it right away so it doesn't sell out before you do. But if it is sold out currently, just give it some time. It'll come back into stock. These figures have been kind of going in and out of stock for like the last two weeks. One way or another, definitely pick this up again through the link that I will include in the description and grab yourself this beautiful Corythosaurus. And also like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.